Oh, baloney. The whole thing always gets back to drugs. Hello, my name is Sandra Grasse, and I'm a licensed acupuncturist. Welcome to what's going to be, I think, part three now of the PCOS series. Um, if you haven't seen the other videos, I will leave the links below, and you can just have a look at... Um, there's the one where we did a small, very, very brief introduction. Last week we were talking about treatment strategies, and today we're just going to go through where do we actually get... What, what are we basing these... Uh, um, these treatment strategies on and um, so just very very briefly just give you a bit of information about some of the studies that um that I've looked at over the last while firstly a little bit of housekeeping and just to say a big big massive thank you to everyone that has subscribed to the channel and we have now over 1300 views which is great and uh, we really appreciate all the thank you notes and messages that we are uh, that we are getting from everyone, and it's great encouragement. And yeah, we will continue. So thank you very much for that. Actually, just just due to the new changes on on YouTube, when you subscribe, beside that button there will be a, a little bell. That if you click on that, you will actually be notified um, the next time that a video, a new video, would be uh, will be out. You will get a notification, so you'll be the first to know. And just I, I would I would recommend you to click on subscribe and on the bell because we're really working on the um, on a few live events, and we're going to have those uh, in interviews with the um, with the experts coming really really soon um, so if you have any questions that you want me to put to um, anyone I can't really tell you who it's going to be because I want it to be a surprise but if you have any questions about PCOS in terms of advice that, that you might want you can send those and um, leave them on the comment section below and I will put them through to um, to the experts in the next few weeks. You'll you'll hear more about this. So um, so back to the PCOS series. Uh, now that we have all the thank yous out of the way, um, and if you remember from last week, we talked about the treatment principles in the acupuncture clinic um, for someone that would come in that we would either suspect or we would know as a confirmed diagnosis that they've been diagnosed with PCOS. And we were using material that was kindly given to us by Dr. Lorna Brown from AccuBalance Clinic over in Vancouver. I, again, I would su suggest that you just take a little bit of time, go through his website. It's just it's absolute tons of information there. It's acubalance.ca and I thank him so, so much for his support over the last few years and, and again for giving us the opportunity to use some of his, his clinical material. It's, it's really, really, we, we really appreciate it. And actually on that, um, going on the next thing that I want to talk to you about is this particular researcher uh, in Sweden. And last year when I was gathering, you know, stuff for the uh, for the scoping review and looking at different studies, I remember talking to Lauren about this particular researcher that I thought actually has tons of work out. I would really like to, uh, you know, just having that amazing opportunity to talk to her. And Lauren goes, uh, yeah, sure, no problem. Here's her email. Just contact her. I'm sure she'll be okay to uh, to discuss that with you. And I was like, wow, is it that simple? Yeah. <laughs> and, and it was. It was that simple because um, I did end up... Uh, um, emailing Dr. Elizabeth Stenner Victorin and she did reply and she was just great in, in helping me out. I had a few questions about some of the studies that she had put out and it was that simple. It, it's 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 great. It's been just such an amazing experience and just, just a quick introduction about, about her work and how she came about in, into the world of, of research into um, acupuncture and PCOS. She has worked clinically with acupuncture since 1987 and done acupuncture research since 1991. In 2000, her clinical and experimental studies ended up in a PhD at the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. And since 2005, she has worked full-time as a researcher with grants from the Swedish Research Council, and she has published more than 80 peer-reviewed studies. So <clears throat> I, just, I just printed a few of the, uh, just a few of the studies just to give you an overview, and one of them is from 2000. And the title is Effects of Electroacupuncture on Anovulation in Women with PCOS. And just reading really, really quickly from, uh, um, from the results. As pharmacological induction in, of ovulation in women with PCOS is associated with negative side effects, alternative or complementary methods are needed. Although the details are unknown, experimental and clinical evidence suggests that electro electroacupuncture can reset the sympathetic system 
via beta endorphinergic mechanisms at the hypothalamic and brainstem levels. So I know there is a ton of long words there, but the um, what this what this means as a conclusion, the um, the researchers actually put down that. Considering all of these facts together, we suggest that electroacupuncture may be an alternative or a complement to pharmacological induction of ovulation in women with PCOS who have a minor metabolic disturbance. In 2008, um, another study where um, Dr. Stenner Victorian was the, the main researcher, um, it's called Acupuncture in Polycystic Ovary Syndrome, Current Experimental and Clinical Evidence. And just reading a few lines from it, clearly acupuncture can affect PCOS via modulation of endogenous regulatory systems, including the sympathetic nervous system, the endocrine, and the neuroendocrine system. Um, I think I have another note from it. Yep. <clears throat> On the conclusion, it has that... Um, Despite the lack of a large body of evidence, we should not ignore the fact that many women with PCOS use acupuncture. In the hands of competent registered health practitioners, acupuncture is safe. Clinical and experimental evidence shows that acupuncture can be a suitable alternative or complement to pharmacological induction of ovulation in women with PCOS and may also relieve other symptoms without adverse side effects. Clearly, acupuncture modulates endogenous regulatory systems, including the sympathetic nervous system, the endocrine system, and the neuroendocrine system. So, you see, we're going back to 2000, back to 2008, and there's, there's, there's tons of evidence out there, um, research is still being put together. I, um, I have a few more to read, but look, I can just read the title just really, really quick. Um, this is from the American Journal of Physiology, um, Endocrinology and Metabolism, Impact of Electroacupuncture and Physical Exercise on Hyperandrogenism and Oligo or Amenorrhea in Women with PCOS. It's a randomized controlled trial. And that is from 2010. And from 2013, you have acupuncture for ovulation induction in polycystic ovary syndrome. And this is another randomized controlled trial. That's also from the American Journal of Physiology. So tons and tons of research. You can see just, just, uh, just as two things that I want to point out. Number one, the, one of the main goals is inducing ovulation. And we talked about this on the previous uh, previous videos, inducing ovulation just to try and reset that hormone cycle and try to bring that menstrual cycle on the woman to a normal range, so as close a textbook as you can, because that, if the woman is trying to get pregnant, that's going to give her more chances. Or if they're just trying to deal with all the side effects, a normal uh, hormone cycle it's going to give her a better menstrual cycle and therefore eliminating all the symptoms that go along when something is not right there. The other thing that I wanted to mention quickly just in case you're wondering is the use of electroacupuncture compared to why is it electroacupuncture or just acupuncture. So that was one of the things that I wanted to clear and um, and ask Dr. Stenner Victorin and we did talk about over email about a few things of why was it exactly that the electroacupuncture was used very, very simply, in my mind, and bear in mind that that was only my first year doing the Masters, so I thought, to make it stronger, you know, it's, it's a tough enough condition to get, to shift, to get moving. So I thought, well, yeah, just make the treatment stronger. But actually, no, not really. So the reason why um, the, the, uh, Dr. Stenner Victorian the, the, uh, uh, had some of those um, studies with electroacupuncture was just to standardize the dosage so to make sure that it's really really difficult between different practitioners you know what amount of stimulation um, for different individuals coming in for that particular study so she actually mentioned that the studies always combined manual and electric um, stimulation and when the needles were inserted they were manipulated manually and thereafter stimulated with low frequency electroacupuncture so the, and some points were stimulated only manually. So the, the conclusion was, as she said, from a scientific point of view, it's easier to use electroacupuncture because it's easier to standardize the treatment. So again, think about it, this is all very scientific, but if you want to make it more even between the different groups that are getting acupuncture, 
if you're getting different practitioners, even if the, even if the, the practitioner is blinded and doesn't know about the intensity, it's still going to be different. So use electroacupuncture and standardize a treatment just to make it more more even for everyone. And getting the recognition on the studies to get the studies published and to show how um, how it works. So electroacupuncture versus manual acupuncture, not a big deal. Um, and she said that yeah, you can stimulate the points manually and get the same results from it. Um, so yeah, there you go. There's uh, um, just scratching the surface on uh, in terms of of, um, of of research in terms of how to 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 base the acupuncture treatments so that we can we can address the PCOS in our clinics. Um, and I, I only picked one particular researcher because I'm really really interested in her work. And there's there's tons more of material out there. So if you have any questions, please feel free to to send them over to us. And we're looking forward to uh, to get the, those interviews uploaded and see what you think of them. And until next time, be kind and be healthy. Oh, baloney! The whole thing always gets back to drugs. Thank you.